Hello everyone. This video continues with the previous one. In the previous video, we learned how to calculate area between the two curves. So before I get started with this form, with this example, I would like everyone to uh, uh, recall what we have done. Okay, so I summarize the concept in this diagram and the formulas here. So you have to decide which formula to use by examine the uh, position of your functions and decide what element that you are going to use. So if you are going to use horizontal element, then this is the formula that you need to use. Okay, so don't forget your C and D are the lower and the upper limit associated with your y-axis value here. Okay, and if you are choosing the vertical element, then um, your upper and lower limit would be A to B. So A, B are the value on your x-axis. So given that, you realize that your integrand has to be in terms of x or your integrand has to be in terms of y. Okay, and when do you choose your elements? How do you know which one to choose? So if you choose the uh, uh, horizontal element, then you make sure that anywhere within that enclosure area that you place your rectangle or your uh, strip or your element, then it touches both of your function. Okay, so in this case, horizontal element doesn't matter where I place this dy, I will have it touch uh, both of this uh, function. The same thing here, if I choose my vertical element, doesn't matter where I place it, it actually touch just both of my functions. So let's get back to our example. So before I choose the element, I uh, will highlight the uh, area that I'm working with. So this is my parabola. And in this case, it's the parabola open to the side, okay? because I have the square root. And then this is the straight line, because I have a linear equation in this case. So this will be y equal to minus x uh, plus 2. And this one is y equal to the square root of 4 minus x. All right. So I'm going to highlight the area that I'm working with. Okay. It's very important to highlight it because now I'm going to look only within the area that I highlighted so I can realize which function is the right one and what function is the left one and what element that I'm going to use. So I can tell everyone that I'm going to use horizontal element because it doesn't matter where I place this, I, uh, I, will, I have it uh, touch both of this function. So I will draw my arrow like this for everyone. The reason I draw this arrow is because I want to remind everyone that you are going to take the right function and subtract the left function. So why do I say right and left and look within this uh, green highlight area? It's because if you look within the green highlight area, you can see that your parabola obviously is from the right, okay? And this is the left. Because if you look outside, this tends to be the right one. Okay, so which is incorrect. Okay, so the concept of take the right function, subtract the left function is to make sure you you concentrate and focus uh, your vision and your eyes within this uh, green area because this is the exact area that you have to look for. Okay, so given this uh, uh, vertical horizontal element, okay, I'm sorry, it's a horizontal element. I am going to write down the formulas that I'm going to use for. Uh, for this, okay, so I will calculate the area by using the integral from c to d of uh, x2 minus x1, and I integrate this as a function of y. So c and d are the two uh, values right here on y and the point intersection right here, and I project it onto uh, this part of the graph. Um, this should be my C and this is, should be my D. Okay. So because I am working with the function in terms of Y, I have to solve for this uh, uh, function 
and uh, isolate the unknown as uh, as x. Okay, so I will isolate x in this case so that I can have a function in term of y. So for this one, I should have y square equal to 4 minus x. Okay, so then bring x over to this side, I should have 4 minus y square. Okay, so it is my right function, right? So this is the right one. So I will identify this as x2. Okay, so put this inside this uh, uh, green uh, rectangle so that we can, uh, we know that we are going to use that later. I will do the same thing for this one. I will solve for x as well. So x right here, so I bring y over, so 2 minus y. Okay, and this one is a one further to the left, so this will be my x1. Okay, because I have to take the right, right one, subtract the left one. Okay, so now you see that you have uh, almost uh, getting to your uh, integrand here, the correct one. So let's just write it down, and then we can figure out our uh, point of intersection. So the area is equal to C2D. So I will have 4 minus y square, subtract 2 minus y, all of this, integrate in term of y. Now you see all your integrand is in term of y, and there's your differential factor of dy. Okay, so this will give me 4 minus y square minus 2 plus y. So the area will be equal to uh, 2. Okay, so you can combine these two terms. 2 minus y square plus y. Okay, so minus y square plus y. All of it as a function of dy. Okay, now uh, cal calculating the c and the d, I need to um, uh, let x1 equal to x2, okay? So I'm going to write it down for everyone. To solve for c and d, okay? Uh, let x1 equal to x2, because then you can see that you can calculate your value of, uh, of y, the unknown y in this case. So I will have uh, 2 minus y equal to uh, 4 minus y square. Okay, so moving everything over to one side of the equation and let this side equal to 0. I realize now that I'm having a quadratic equation to work with. So I will have uh, y square uh, subtract y uh, subtract 2 equal to 0 because this and this will give me the minus 2. And uh, this is a very simple quadratic uh, formula uh, uh, equation. You don't have to use quadratic formulas. You can just use factoring in order to figure out the two unknown. So using factoring, I will have y minus 2 uh, multiplied by y plus 1. Okay, so basically what you do is you find two numbers uh, multiply give you a uh, minus 2, okay? The same two number adding will give you a minus uh, 1. So that two number would be minus 2 and 1. I take minus 2 times 1, I got minus 2. I take minus 2 plus 1, I got the minus 1. So it's more like uh, using the um, uh, factoring the trinomials uh, method. Okay, so now you can solve for y. So y equal to 2 or y equal to minus 1. Okay, so let's take a look at our uh, graph and see if it's actually correspondent with uh, what we have on this graph right here. So right here, uh, c should be equal to uh, a minus 1. Okay, and then the top one should be equal to 2. Okay, so it, it's pretty close, pretty close. So, and it obviously the upper and the lower limit, and it's pretty close in terms of our, uh, of what we, where we indicate on this graph, okay. So after we get that, you can substitute this uh, into your equation. So this is the uh, area, 
be equal to 2. Okay, from minus 1 to 2 of uh, 2 minus y squared plus y ever function dy. Okay, so integral of 2 is 2y. Integral of y squared is uh, y q over 3. And integral of y is y squared over 2. Evaluate from minus 1 to 2. And don't forget to remind ourselves that we should have f2 minus the f1 in this case, right? f of minus 1. All right. Okay. So the area equal to 2 times 2 subtract 2q over 3 plus 2 squared over 2. So this should be my f of 2. That means I will make sure that every where the y is, I will replace that by the value of 2. And then I subtract this with, so 2 times minus 1, minus uh, minus 1 to the exponent 3 divided by 3, plus minus 1 to the exponent 2 divided by 2, and this should be my f of minus 1. Okay, it's a good idea to write it down so that we can check the value that we substitute in. 2 times here's minus 1, minus 1 raised to exponent 3, and minus 1 raised to exponent 2. So, so far so good. So all we have to do now is just uh, using bad math and calculate all of this value. I should have 4 minus 8 over 3 plus 2. I should have minus 2. I should have plus 1 third. Okay, so I want to remind everyone that this is a minus raised to the exponent 3. So negative raised to an odd exponent, you have a negative again. So negative 1, so negative 1 times the 1 here as a minus. So you have a positive 1 third. Okay, so this one you should have positive half. Uh, obviously, it's because uh, negative 1 squared is positive 1. So that should be a positive half. So the area equal to? 10 over 3 subtract minus of 7 over 6. So then I should have the area equal to 10 over 3 plus 7 over 6. Okay, so in this case, uh, if you do your common denominator, then your area is equal to 27 over 6, which is 9 over 2 units square. Okay, so the area that you just found is actually equal to 4.5 units square. All right, okay. So I think we, we did okay in this example. And I'm going to move on to the next example because I believe that I still have quite a lot of time. I have 17 minutes to complete the next example. And I hope that I will not rush myself in this case. Okay, so for this example, you are working with two uh, parabolas. Okay, so the parabolas determine the area bounded by y equal to 1 plus x squared and y equal to minus x squared minus 2x plus 5. So I would like everyone to review the concept of a parabola and recognize which one that you are working with. Okay, so... Uh, the one that opens up will have the positive value in front of x squared. Okay? The ones that opens down will have the negative in front of x squared. So then I uh, will have this as my... Uh, this one is y equal to minus x squared minus 2x plus 5. Okay, and the one down here is, this one should be y equal to 1 plus x squared. Okay, you can quickly check as well, because the, if you see, you let x equal to 0, then you have y equal to 1 in this case, so right there, right there is your y equal to 1. Okay, so I'm going to highlight the area that I'm working with, that I have to find, so this exact area they have to look for. So now I will concentrate my eyes within this area to identify um, uh, which 
element that I should choose. And then from the element that I choose, I can figure out the upper and the lower one. So in this case, I should use the uh, vertical element. Okay, so I'm going to use this vertical element because it doesn't matter where I place this vertical element, I will have this touch of both curve. And I draw that arrows for everyone to see that if I look within this green area, I concentrate my eyes on this green area, I know that this one right here, this parabola right here, is the upper function. So this should be my y2 and this should be my y1. Okay, because if you look outside of this, the uh, parabola opens up, tend to be the upper one, and this one tend to be lower one, which is incorrect. Okay, so you have to concentrate your eye within the areas that you are working with. So then I identify my y2 and my y1, and uh, I know the formulas that I need to use in this case. So you can write it down, the formulas that you are going to choose is uh, a equal the integral from a to b and y2 minus y1 uh, as a function of x all right okay so uh, let's figure out the uh, point of intersection so how do you figure out point of intersection the point of intersection would be here right here and right there and you project it onto the x-axis and you project it right onto the x-axis and then we will use the algebra to figure out what value that we have to work with. Okay, so <clears throat> area is equal to the integral from a to b. y2 is negative x squared minus 2x plus 5, all of it in the bracket, subtract 1 plus x squared in the bracket, all of it as a function of x. So now you see everything is in terms of x and you, you have the differential factor of x here as well. Okay. So area equal to a to b minus x squared minus 2x plus 5 subtract x subtract x squared subtract 1. Okay, so I should not changing the position of this 2. Alright, so in this case what I have is the area will be equal to, you are combining these two, so you should have uh, negative uh, 2x squared minus 2x plus 4, all right? All of it at the function uh, in terms of dx, okay? So now let's look for the point of intersection, okay? So uh, to solve for a and B, I'm going to let Y1 equal to Y2 because the point of intersection, so I can go ahead and do that. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do next is writing as 1 plus X squared equal to minus X squared minus 2X plus 5. Okay, so bringing everything over to the other side of the equation. <clears throat> so I have 1 plus x squared plus x squared plus 2x minus 5 equal to 0. So I should have it here as uh, 2x squared uh, plus 2x uh, minus 4 equal to 0. Okay, because it is an equation equal to 0, I can go ahead and divide everything by 2 to simplify my equation. So x squared plus x minus 2 equal to 0. I can quickly use uh, factoring to figure out my uh, point of intersection here. Okay, so basically you are finding two numbers which multiply give you negative uh, 2. The same two number adding will give you positive 1 in front of x. So that two numbers should be 2 and minus 1. So in this case, I should have x equal to minus 2 or x equal to 1. Okay, so let's go back to our um, uh, here. So this is minus 2 and this is 1. Okay, so it looks pretty good. All right, so now let's apply this 2 into my integral. So negative 2 and 1. And uh, my uh, integrand is negative 2x squared 
minus 2x plus 4, all of it uh, uh, integrate as a differential of a factor of dx. Okay, so I would like to remind everyone one thing. Okay, up to this point, okay, the reason I um, kind of figure out the integrand before everything else is because once I have found this integrand right here, I'm going to leave it exactly the way it is to integrate. Okay, if you take a look at this, this is negative 2x squared minus 2x plus 4, you see they have a common factor of 2. Okay, or here, what we have done is we divide each of this by 2 so that we can simplify our equation. The reason you can divide each by 2 to simplify because your other side of the equation is equal to 0. Whatever you've done on this side, you do the exact same thing on the other side. So because it is an equation, it's absolutely correct to do this. And then you can solve for the two values of x. However, with the integrand, you must leave them alone. Okay, so in the past, while teaching this course, I found that many students uh, skipped this step first. They didn't do this step. And once they found this, they used this as the integrand to integrate, which is absolutely incorrect. Okay, because if you do that, you actually reduce your area quite a bit. So, so let's um, integrate this. So I should have negative two third x cubed uh, minus two over two x squared plus four x evaluate from minus two to one. Okay, so I will write it as uh, f of one subtract f of minus two. Okay, <clears throat> excuse me. So the area equal to, I can simplify this right away just, just to let you know. So I will have uh, two, negative two third of uh, one, and I bring that to exponent three. Even a one is a good idea just to still write it. Plus four times one. Okay, so this should be a negative 2 third and negative 2 to the exponent 3 subtract negative 2 uh, square plus 4 times negative 2 okay so we are going to double check our work this should be my f1 where the x is I replace that with the 1 so 1 cube 1 square 4 times 1 so this should be my f of negative 2. So that means where the x is, I replace that with negative 2. So negative 2 to the exponent 3, I did that. Negative 2 squared, I did that. 4 times negative 2. So it's always a good idea to, to double check, all right? Because we, it's quite tedious at this point, and it's so simple to make a, a, a mistake because it's just like bad maths, okay? So and we tend to... Uh, uh, quickly go over this, uh, skip certain step, and it's so easy to make an error at this point. Okay. All right. Okay. So right here, I would like to explain to everyone this. Um, negative 2 raised to exponent 3, you should have negative 8. Negative 8 times negative 2 should give you positive 16. Negative 2 squared should give you positive 4. Multiply the negative in the front should give you negative 4. And 4 times negative 2 should give you negative 8. Okay, so the area equal to this I should have 7 over 3. Okay, so you can just go ahead and use a calculator to figure this out. This should give me 20 over 3. So then my area will be 7 over 3. Uh, it should be negative of 20 over 3, so plus 20 over 3 will be 27 over 3 is equal to 9 units square. Okay, alright. So, you can, I'm going to ask everyone to use a quickly use calculator to figure this out, all right? So you actually have negative 1 plus 4, which is uh, positive 3, positive 3, so it should be 9 over 3. 9 over 3, subtract 2 should be 7 over 3, 
okay? This one you should have um, negative 12, so that means you should have negative 36 over 12, negative 36 over 12, uh, over negative 36 over 3, that's why I should say that, so negative 36 plus 16 should give you negative 20, and then uh, uh, negative 20 over 3, Negative, negative would be a positive, so that should give you a 9 unit square as the final answer. Okay, I'm sorry everyone, I was a bit distracted because I think my cell phone was uh, uh, ringing on the background. Okay, I already turned it off, but uh, somehow it still give me the noise. So uh, now, uh, let me review this question for everyone because I still have a couple minutes. So the most important part in this type of question to determine the area bounded by is to identify our function first. Okay, so identify the function, fill in the, the information here. So if you have a parabola with a negative in front of x squared, your parabola is opens down. And then if you have a positive in front of the x squared, so your parabola opens up, so then you, you uh, label this. And then again, I highlight the green area that I work with because with this green area, I can identify what elements I'm going to use. So I'm going to use the vertical elements. So with vertical element, this is the formulas that I have to work with. Okay, so this is the formula that I need to work with. Uh, it's a good idea to identify this right away, knowing that you have to figure out your y2 and your y1. y2 is always the upper function. So how do I identify the upper function? Is to concentrate my eyes within this area because this is the area that I have to find. So in this area, my upper function would be the upper parabola opens down. My lower function would be the parabola opens up. Because if you look outside of this area, you look at the general outside area, this seems to be the upper one, which is not the case. Okay, so the, the tricky part in working with these formulas is to make sure that you concentrate on the area that you are working with. Okay, so then um, after that, I just substitute the uh, uh, values in and figure out my integrand. And I always do this part first. I do this part first because after this point, I know that this is the full integrand that I have to integrate. Because I'm calculating the area between the two curves, this is not equal to zero by anything so that I cannot simplify them. We just have to leave the integrand the way they are. And then I solve all the point intersections at this part of the point of the intersection because it is a quadratic equation and the other side equal to zero. You let these two equations equal to each other, so y1 equal to y2 in this case, right? Then when they are equal, you move everything over very logically that this right hand side equal to zero because the, of the zero. You can go ahead and divide by the number that you wish to divide so you can simplify your equation and solve for the two unknowns. And the two unknown in this case is your upper limit and your lower limit. So after you find that, you fill that in, integrate, and then apply fundamental theorem and do the correct uh, bed mass and figure out the answer for the areas. All right. Thank you, everyone.